once upon a time, in the middle of a deep, dark presidency, an average Joe, Joe Biden, lived a very boring life. Good morning, Didi. Hi, Joe. What's with his daughter? Losing my soul. Yeah. Until one day, he found out his presidency was over. You asked in a rag and the truck out of my face. It's gone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on. That is not paid for by them. That is paid for by the people of Detroit. You are qualified in there. I'm not qualified for this job. Let me tell you something. You want to go right now? Okay? You want to go right now? Hey kids, it's your old pal ML Elric. Just thinking about that trailer for Joe vs. the Volcano and wondering, why doesn't Tom Hanks bring the mullet back? He looks so (laughs) fantastic in the beginning of that movie. But we picked that for Mr. Mark Fellhauer's once again outstanding production because we're here because Joe vs. the Monsoon. Yeah, wow. The Monsoon won Joe Biden. President number, was he 46? Yes. Mm-hmm. 46, got 86 by his his verbal gaffes, his seeming his age. lack of coherence. And his age. Yeah, whether the mental acuity is there or not, it sure looked bad. And uh, speaking of people whose mental acuity <laughs> is in question, mainly because of their verbal skills, Sean Windsor is joining us uh, remotely from... Uh, from the uh, jerk. the Western uh, White House uh, in Ann Arbor. Thank you for that that nice introduction. It's uh, always so good to be with you, bo- you boys. It's uh, you know we, we like to we like to honor our elder statesmen here on, <laughs> on the soul of Detroit. Um, I have to tell you before we get into our conversation that this is the last week to order our awesome merchandise, and I I am no Jay Peterman, but here goes. <laughs> oh. You're fighting through a crowd on a November morning when you spot them. That enchanting person you've sought your entire life. They seem inviting, but distant. Is it your tattered t-shirt or the goosebumps raised by the brisk air and the excitement of something new? You want to warm up. You want to hide that yellow pitted t-shirt, but you want to avoid breaking out a sweat. Luckily, you have your fashionable lightweight ML Soul Detroit zip-up hoodie. Heavy enough to keep you warm, light enough to keep you looking cool. Available till July 29th. And hey, only, nice jacket. Who shot the couch? <laughs> only $60 <laughs> at our pop-up shop. And we will have a link to our merchandise store on our website, which is mlsoulofdetroit.com. We're also brought Where did you to get you- those clothes? At the toilet store? <laughs> you know, we aren't selling toilet store clothing this time uh brick tamlin we have some new fat our redone trucker hat much much sharper we have a new koozies teebs heavy consultation Jeez. heavy consultation with teebs together with our our uh, merchandise supplier we came up with a fantastic koozie that we think you're gonna like which is which is something to keep your cans cold i don't know what you were thinking out there but it's uh, very cheap we also have a hockey-style hood up, hoodie with a lace-up on the front and uh, new polo shirts and all kinds of cool stuff. So check that out because it's one way that you can support the show both by looking fashionable and by helping put a few coins in our pocket. The other people who support the show financially, Dr. Yaldo, will tell you how LASIK can change your life in the same way it changed Mark's life and my life. We both have better than perfect vision. How's that possible? I know it sounds weird. We're going to tell you how in just a little bit. Luke Nowacki will help you prepare for a better financial future because if you're looking for a man with a plan and a plan that's just for you, Luke Nowacki and Pinnacle Wealth Strategies are the guys to do that for you. Come play Detroit. Stick around. We'll tell you how you can save 10% on your registration if you want to get into some great sports leagues here in the fine city of Detroit. And if you want to see our beautiful city, from the seat of a high-tech, low-effort, high-proof, depends on what you're drinking, ride, you can go to Michigan Peddler. We will tell you how to save $40 when you book a ride with the Michigan Peddler. That's coming up later in the show. And, of course, if you're part of the Soul Patrol, a Patreon supporter of this show, for as little as $5 a month, you can watch us. 
as some of you are doing right now. You can get the show before anybody else, and you can listen to us without some of those annoying insertion ads for businesses where you're like, why did they think I would dig this? Just skip the line, folks. Become a Patreon supporter. $5 a month. We'll tell you how to do that later. And we also have a link to our Patreon program at our website, which, again, is mlsolvedetroit.com. Woo! That's a lot. I know. I mean, it, it feels like we have a lot of sponsors, but if you knew how much they're paying the sponsor of the show, you'd be like, well, geez, I better join Patreon because these guys aren't going to pay the bills. But we're trying, folks. We love being here every week. Um, unlike Joe Biden, we're not bailing out on you. Oh, oh, man. Oh, you think he's bailing? No, I don't think he wanted to. I don't think he had any choice. And this was rumored. There were people who thought this weekend was going to be decisive. Me? Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you. Uh, was I, I, t- I think I was talking to you about it. Was it you I was talking to? Or Charlie, one of them. I'm like, it's, he's done by the end of this People often weekend. confuse us. <laughs> well, I do, because I talk to both of you guys a lot, but... Um, the thing that really stuck out to stuck out to me was last Thursday when they're like, "Hey, we only got twenty five percent of the donations we thought we were going to get in the last month," and it's like, "Okay, it's over then because it's all about money." Yeah, I think when the donors you, tell you, you see the record uh, record setting donations or not uh, fundraising yesterday, no, or Sunday, rather, no, I did not. Did it exceed yeah, they, the uh, the donations that Trump brought in after the debate? Because I thought that was pretty epic. Well, no, it was for sure, and I, I I don't know about compared to Republicans, just the, the Democrats. It was the most single day raise they've had. It was like sixty six million bucks from the minute the announcement came until last till Sunday night. I wonder how many of those date donations were pledges that were withheld. Yeah, once it's Joe a good said, question. "That's I'm a not, fair question." I'm not turning back because. You know, Thursday. Uh, you know, I, I typically work Monday through Thursday at the Free Press. Friday, I teach and I have a student investigative reporting program but before I went home on Thursday my boss James Hill who's the political editor said or oversees the political team said hey um, thinking we may need to call you this weekend are you going to be around and do you have an idea for a column if Joe Biden drops out and I thought yeah I mean hell we were talking about on this show two weeks ago what happens if Gretchen Whitmer gets involved either as a candidate for president, vice president, or goes to Washington, the ramifications down ballot, and, you know, Garland Gilchrist as governor, Mike Duggan, all of a sudden maybe he stays as mayor. What happens to the city council? I mean, it's a good show, and I'm, I feel like we were somewhat prescient, even though we don't know what Whitmer's going to do as we record this. Oh, she's already come out and uh, supported um, Kamala. Oh, right, but I mean, yeah. we don't oh, know, you know, could she, could... Oh, could she jump yeah. into the ticket? Will she be on the ticket? Yeah, if she's sure. not on the ticket, will she be offered a cabinet post? We wouldn't know that until January. If she takes a cabinet post, you know, what happens back here in Michigan and Detroit? So we chopped that up pretty good last week. But so I thought, okay, I'm on standby. Well, it gets to be about, I don't know, two in the afternoon on Sunday, and I haven't heard anything. Biden's digging in his heels, and I thought, well, I guess he's sticking it out. And all of a sudden, Bam! He's out. I mean, where were you guys when that happened? What were you thinking, Sean? Did I needed to get. Did I needed to get dressed? <laughs> Wait, you weren't dressed at two o'clock two in on a afternoon? Sunday. I'm, I'm joking. I'm I joking. Mean, I know no, you I run was... a nudist camp there in Washington <laughs> County, uh, <laughs> no. Windsor's Wieners, no. but um, no, I, and also a Dachshund Rescue. I thought, I so people was, are never sure what's going on there. I saw it on my phone, and I was. Uh, I don't remember what I was doing. I may have been. Wait, oh, so you were naked eating, and looking eating, at your phone. I, I think I know what you were doing. I was eating an egg salad sandwich. <laughs> naked? <laughs> no, I was clothed. I was eating an egg salad sandwich and it's trying like you're to figure on that out a ship in to Wally. A to, a, to a family gathering at a, at a lake. So, yeah. And I assume that was the talk of the whole gathering, right? Yeah, Sean's skinny. Uh, it, it absolutely was. In fact, there were two Swedes there. Both of them had moved. They were brothers, and they'd moved. To the states, uh, one of them was a ship cruise engineer. Of course, there were two Miami Swedes in, in there. Eighties, <laughs> yeah. and the other guy was sort of a handyman. But uh, no, it was it was interesting getting their perspective. You would think, oh, Swedes, you know, liberal, progressive, but no, the one was sort of a moderate, and the other one was a pretty hardcore uh, right winger because he spent his early adult youth in South Florida on a cruise ship, married a Tennessean. And um, ended up in Gatlinburg, and yeah, so it was interesting. Did you tell them that we played the final countdown on the podcast a couple weeks ago? No, I did not. Maybe I should have. Did you know that we played the final countdown on the show a few weeks ago? Uh, The uh, the Pistons song? Yeah. Yeah, I do now. Okay. 
I just didn't know if you remembered it or not. The song by Swedish rockers Europe that was yeah, adapted yeah, yeah, by the yeah, Pistons, yeah, no, you was, mean? No, it, it was totally, the, everywhere you went, it was the talk. You know, the people are calling and texting. And Mike and I obviously know a lot of journalists, so we were getting texts about, this is what it's like. Our, our friend uh, Ben Schmidt, Mike, uh, who's an editor in Pittsburgh, said I picked the wrong, you know, I picked the wrong uh, business once again. So I'm, I'm just was, making some some notes for our show notes, and this one says Sean naked with Swedes. <laughs> I'm not sure well, that's going to help our they listening. They just had suits on, so well, one of them's more of a. I said you were naked. He, he he just had a suit on. The other one was dressed. The Republican had a full sort of South Florida summertime look. The moderate had uh, the maybe he's even apolitical. He had a swimsuit and a long beard and nothing else. I just turned into RuPaul's Drag Race. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it, this is a day when journalists, no matter what you cover, are on high alert. And I'm, I'm, I guess they probably wouldn't have drawn sports in unless they told you, hey, don't worry about that column because we don't have room for it. We're going to fill the paper with reaction to this. And so I, I was sitting uh, on, uh, on the deck reading the New York Times and the Free Press and just kind of enjoying a Sunday afternoon when it's like, okay, time to go. So at a family dinner, I was supposed to be at 5.30, and I called them and said, I probably am not going to be there. I'm going to be late, and just sat down to start <clears throat> writing a column about what happens if Big Gretch goes to D.C. And um, and then, then things just evolved. Remember, it was sort of like uh, Biden's dropping out. He hasn't endorsed Harris. Like, oh, he has endorsed Harris. Oh, some people want it to be an open convention. Oh, now they're endorsing Harris. I mean, it, it does oh, feel Joe like Manchin it's turning into a... going to re-register as a Democrat and get, throw his name in. Remember that? Yeah. Well, yeah. and then, yeah. and then yeah. he that, that since lasted, said... What, all of eight hours? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's like, Joe, you're more hated among Democrats than Republicans. Him and yeah. Christian Cinema, the two Democrats that Democrats love to hate. Well, it's really funny. In a perfect world, yeah, they'd probably have some kind of um, open primary like they didn't have um, this past you know, fall and winter. But when it comes down to it, hey, it's the Biden-Harris uh, campaign. So she gets all that money. She gets all that infrastructure. So it, it was almost a done deal when he stepped down. It, it's yeah. probably cleaner that way, too. I don't know what all the campaign finance laws are. Mike might have a better idea than me. But it, isn't it a little cleaner that way in terms of the money Well, one of Harris? The, because well, Harris has been on the ticket and part of the fundraising. So One of the things that I think they're trying to determine is – does Biden officially withdraw as the nominee at a certain point? Because I think some of this, there's a timing issue. Like if this was given to Biden Harris Incorporated, do they have to reincorporate as Harris Biden? And, and do they have to um, do it before the convention? Does she have to be officially the nominee? Does he have to be nominated? Then, I mean, I, I've been reading about it. It's so convoluted. It's hard to make sense of. And of course the Republicans, as they should, are trying to cause trouble and say, oh, there's some legal questions. I don't think you can have all that money. And, well, if, if they're on the ticket in these states as Biden-Harris, can they switch it to Harris-Biden? And I'm sure one guy who's really interested in that question is RFK Jr. because he got excluded from some states because he couldn't get some of the paperwork done. So this is going to set off a whole cascade of what-ifs and legal challenges and it's going to be very distracting. And, you know, frankly, the Republicans are smart to try and throw as much sand in everybody's face with this. Because the Democrats, as, as Mark and I were texting on Sunday after this broke, were like, oh, Mark's like, this is going to be good. The Democrats, you know, can finally stop fighting amongst themselves. And I'm like, yeah, that's what, that's what Democrats do really well is coalesce. You know, this is the party of chaos. The fact that they've been so united in Michigan behind Whitmer and Benson and Nessel is nothing short of miraculous, and some of their yeah, natural I, I, fractiousness I, that we've seen has reemerged as Biden looked like he wasn't fit to, uh, you know. I remember people saying the same thing about the Trump campaign in twenty end of 2015, 26, and granted not this late, too, about they're in chaos, they're fighting amongst themselves. It's like, no, and those people want to win, they really do rally, you know. Wait a second, you guys were texting yesterday, and uh, I wasn't part of it. I understand. I understand. You were part of it. Because other, we were afraid you're going to FaceTime us naked with an egg salad sandwich <laughs> on your chest. <laughs> two and two Swedish guys waxing your back. 
Oh, is that why your names kept pop, popping up in my phone? Okay. Now I get now. All right. I, I have a question for you guys because I was sweet it is. I was sitting at home. Uh, I think we were we were watching a family movie, so naturally I was in my phone the whole time. Um, what movie? Uh, they just finished reading a book called The City of Embers, so we watched. Um, they made it into a movie, which failed horribly. Terrible version of the book, but I w- really wasn't. I wasn't paying that much attention. I was playing games on my phone and doing other things, and it came across. And my first thought was, "Oh, Drew wasn't going to record today. I wonder if he wants to record, but he's out of town." So I was like, "Okay, I still have my free time." But um, but I was trying to express to a ten year old, and I wanted you guys have kids that are older, like how messed up this month has been. I mean, it was only about a month ago we had the debate where Biden, you know, the corpse of him just kind of froze up up there. Then you had uh, a presidential assassination attempt. You had the RNC. And now you have, for the first time in, what, 56 years, a presidential, uh, a president not running again? The incumbent not running? I mean, it's like it's hard for me to wrap my head around it, but, you know, a 10-year-old doesn't get any of that. I'm like, this is the first time this has happened since, you know... 56 years, first time a presidential assassination in 43 years. I mean, this is this stuff doesn't happen. Uh, well, when you're talking to a 10 year old, everything is the first time I in know. their life, right? I mean, they just have no but context. the gravity of it, you know, <laughs> which I don't ex- but no, but, uh, but but it does happen, it just doesn't happen very often, right? It's by the by the way, Mike was talking about the uh, the the, the right kind of making. Not not making uh, I Mischief. mean make, I don't know driving some kind of question of how legitimate this is and is it legal and we saw Speaker Johnson hint at that yesterday or hint at that Sunday afternoon another thing they're doing I've been seeing all this all morning is that this was some kind of coup right and trying to delegitimize Harris and whoever she picks as that this is some kind of Russian type of style of coup oh, and that's been that's been interesting I've seen that all over social media. I think, that's, I think that's giving her too much credit. No, right? I mean, have you guys seen that or noticed that, that that's another way to try to, another angle for them? What, that she's she's a sleeper agent? Well, that Biden, in, no, in that Biden was suit? pushed out. That this, she that this pushed was, him out, yeah. Yeah, that he didn't oh. want anything, or maybe not even she did, but this was a, a tiny little cabal of nefarious folks. This isn't democratic at all. This isn't. A uh, power to the people that the Democrats always say they love. This is actually a, uh, a palace backroom, coup. backroom, cigar filled Chicago's era uh, mutiny. Uh, maybe. Hey, maybe it was. Well, you if- know, because the campaign denied that he would step aside for the longest time. And the political reported that, yeah, they finally went to him on Sunday morning and said, here's our internal polling. There's no way you're going to beat Trump. Yeah. And, and that apparently is what lit, finally lit a light bulb. Well, I think I think they're. Um if it was a, if it was a coup, it was one of the best orchestrated ever because Harris did exactly what she should do. She went out there and fought as hard as she possibly could to make it look like she supported Biden to the bitter end, so that when it was given to her, or when she ascended, however you want to look at it, or stepped into the role, it didn't look like you know she was trying to push the old man off the stairs to Air Force One or put a banana peel you know, on the tarmac or something. But but th- that debate, you know, to me, that debate was the most significant debate since the Kennedy-Nixon debate where Nixon wasn't wearing makeup, was sweating, looked nervous, and Kennedy was, you know, cool and calm and handsome and looked ready to take over. And I think Biden could have survived that debate because we've seen people stumble in debates before. But oh. every appearance he had after that where he needed to come back strong, he's, he's calling Zelensky President Putin. He's referring to Harris as, as Vice President Trump. You know, his stutter clearly is something that he can't control anymore, and it's causing him all these malaprops. He, he just looks... He looks like he's he's running out of gas, and then it was that Mike, Mike, Mike. Can I just stop you there for a second? It was that everybody makes mistakes and misses names, and, and Trump does that. It, but Trump has energy. the The last couple of weeks, and any time you saw Biden, I'm sure you guys saw plenty of clips of him just trying to walk, let alone take stairs. He looks so unsteady, and he moves so slowly that just the image of that's like, how can this guy survive? I mean, not survive, but how can he be president four more years? Yeah. Well, the other thing is I saw Bernie Sanders on TV on Friday. Mm. And uh, and Bernie, 
you know, he's a ball of energy and he's like, you know, Joe Biden has been the best president for labor. He's been great for labor. He did this. He did more than anybody's ever done as a president. And he's going off. And at the end, the interviewer says, well, you know, as a fellow 81 years, no, I'm 82. <laughs> and, and so Sam, exactly. It's not the age. It's not but, the age. But here's yeah. Sanders on TV going out there to support Biden. But in a way, it, it, it could be one of the worst things ever because you're like, that guy's 82, and he's a house on fire. Yeah. This whippersnapper of 81 Trump too. Is, is about to fall yeah, off no, tr- Trump too, the couch. For sure. You know, I mean, even among 81-year-olds, Biden looks sluggish. And I remember covering Bob Dole when he ran for president, and he was an old dude. He fell off a frigging stage popped back up with that pen in his hand and kept going, ah, that Bill Clinton, he, he likes the chicks, don't he? He likes the girls. Ah, you know, you don't want to know what he would do with this pen, maybe with a cigar. Ah, you know, I mean, Biden just looks, whatever his mental acuity is, he looks like he's out of gas. And then, then somebody tries to kill Trump and he survives with his fist in the air. And what happens to Biden? He gets COVID. Yeah. The one guy survives a bullet, the other guy can't survive a bug. It's just like it's like the perfect storm yeah. for Joe Biden and well, it he just finally did the right thing though. And and now, now I can finally like have a little bit of um I feel bad for him a little bit now because he was he's just so old and so out of it. I didn't until he dropped out cuz it's like, "Well, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this." We talk about Trump and narcissism, but Biden has some of that too, well, right? They, uh, anybody because that runs, for- he ran, but he didn't he run four years ago on uh, I'm a bridge president, I'm a yeah. one termer, I'm just. And Sean, then he gets Sean, in there. You know that's you know, all last bullshit. Year's when he should have done well, this, no, right? no, but anybody but, that runs for president has a massive ego. You have to. Yeah, that's true. You don't. But, well, the other thing is, you can't run and say I'm only going to be here for four years because you're immediately lame duck. Yep. yep. All your stuff is DOA. It's just like yeah, we'll wait this old fart out. But I do think, uh, to Biden's credit, and Biden isn't always the most truthful guy when he tells stories either. I mean, nobody can compete with Trump on the fib well, scale. Hey, hey, he dropped but, out in, uh, what, 87 for plagiarism, so. Yeah, and, and well, I mean, the stuff like, you know, I, I freed the slaves and I was an Iwo Jima. Yeah, I mean, he's always got these stories that don't. <laughs> His uncle wait. was eaten by cannibals? <laughs> His uncle was eaten by, yeah, and that's a real one. He actually said that and really didn't happen. I, they may have ordered a pizza together and it may have had some other guy as a topping. I don't know. Yeah. But, but, but the thing is. And I just lost the thread. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard to it's hard to recover from my uncle was eaten by cannibals. Yeah, no, that's 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 a game changer. That's a closer right the there. The guy was out to lunch and he wouldn't step down. But I mean, no, oh no, no. Here's feel, what I was going to say. Here's what I was going to say. Even if tr- if you can't say I'm only going to run for one term, if Biden truly believed he was only going to do one term, I'm sure he said that thinking Trump was finished. We've never oh, yeah. seen. A president come at this job for a second pass like Trump. I mean, well, there have been they're, they're, ex-presidents who ran be- again, but they never spent the past four years saying the race was stolen yeah. and trying to orchestrate a coup, a real coup. Not like a maybe Harris did it in a pantsuit coup, but like sending people to the Capitol and trying to get your vice president not to accept the, uh, the electoral college results. I mean, who the hell... Would have thought in 2020, Donald Trump would be still running for president, let alone leading the race. I mean, this is everything about this. If if Charlotte, and I hope you guys are going to talk about this on the Charlotte and Dad podcast, but if (laughs) if Charlotte was 100, she wouldn't have seen something like this. No, I know. It's just the... I'm trying to explain this to her. Now, Biden's 100. She just looks at the TV and goes, this is boring. I'm like, not really. Is it? Okay, great. Yeah. Well, well of course it's of course it's boring if you're a ten year old. But another thing I read, by the way, that I thought was interesting is that the family and his Biden's inner circle, really tight circle, kind of shielded him from how he yep. looked. Yep. And how, and how he was appearing, and it made, it made me think of. Uh, Do you ever see that movie Galaxy Quest? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Where the where the yeah did, what's his name Tim uh, Tim Allen leads a Star Trekian kind of crew, but they're really actors. And then they get involved in real stuff, and the people they're trying to save don't know they're actors. They think, actually think they're real yeah. Star Troopers. We saw the historical to, documents. They, <laughs> exactly, and they have to explain Full to them. Today. They have to explain to them what reality is. It made me think of Biden when I read that story. I thought of that movie Galaxy Quest, where you actually the, the folks around Biden trying to explain to him, "This is how you look." 
to the United States right now. And it's amazing to me that they'd shielded him for that, from that to a degree. Boy, when I think of Galaxy Quest, I think of Sigourney Weaver and Tony Shalhoub getting it on with an octopus. Yeah, well, the boys, there's somebody that gets it on with an octopus. If that's oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The deep, that. yeah. Oh, shit. It's all, it all comes together. But, I uh, guess uh, octopi are, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna step outside the species, maybe maybe the octopi is the way to go. Is that is that the message here? Uh, I, you know what? I, there's so many things I, I can know, say. Do you want me to I'm name just, a different animal? I'm just, I'm, just, <laughs> what do you want me to do? I'm counting to ten. Yeah, I'm just no, going that so no, that's that's to two references to two movies where people are, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. making love to octopus. But th th this is, you know, so we talk about the family advising, um, <laughs> advising uh, Biden. What if Hunter's in there saying, uh, so you're not pardoning me? Okay, I don't care. Yeah, you know, beat it. And I wonder now if, if, if uh, Biden on his way out will reverse course and pardon Hunter, or if there's a deal with Harris where he says, I'm getting out, I'm going to support you. But here's what you got to do when you get in and do it the first day so it, so you can get, you know, put it behind you. You got to pardon Hunter because... Uh, that would be disastrous. I don't want my boy going to... I don't know. I mean, pardoning Nixon hurt Ford, but pardoning some goofball on some, you know... Yeah, but he's a symbol. tack charge. But he's a symbol. Yeah, well... Of corruption. Well, there was a French king who converted to Catholicism because he had to to become king. And he said, Paris a vote en masse, which means Paris is worth a mass. Harris may be saying, presidency is worth a pardon. That would surprise me. I mean, I mean whatever else they say about Biden, you're right. He, he's definitely a, a storyteller that loves to exaggerate or lie, I guess, or just make up his own facts. But uh, he seems pretty steadfast on this one, that he wasn't going to pardon his son. I, I, in a way, admired that. Well, he's also got a Supreme Court ruling that might throw that into disarray, too. You know, the sp or not the Supreme Court ruling, I'm sorry, oh. the, um, the judge that threw out, former Wolverine, by the way, that threw out oh, the wow. Trump document case. Eileen Cannon? Yeah, though she, I think she went to Michigan. Well, here, here's, a pre, here's a prediction. Y your next Supreme Court justice in a Trump administration. Oh, without a doubt. Eileen, Eileen Cannon. Cannon. This, sure. this, 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 uh, this jurist has been auditioning for that job for four years plus. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, pardoning your son, it, it seems... Now, the difference is Biden comes on and says, I'm not going to pardon my son. Trump, when he was president, was like, well, if anybody gets a phone call from the FBI, you know, there's a pardon waiting for you. So, I mean, the, the contrast between these two presidents, just in terms of tone, in terms of energy, is, is in terms of hair color, although natural hair color, they may be pretty close, is, is staggering. And now Harris gets in, does she start saying, well, you know what, my friend Joe Biden, if he was too old to run for president, so is Donald Trump, so is RFK Jr. And hell, for that matter, so is Jill Stein. Who's running the Green Party again? So Harris is 59, and uh, which is a year older than I am. I hate to say that, but it's, it's the truth. And she's been a district attorney, an attorney general, a senator, and a VP. And I write about the Lions occasionally. That's, yeah, I uh, know which one yeah. I like. More. I know which one I like better. That's uh, I like you better. I mean, it makes you feel a little bit like, what are you doing with your life? Uh, district attorney, attorney general. Senator and a VP, and you're not even 60? Sounds like you both deal with a lot of lying. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I've, uh, oh, I mean, I guess I was a short order cook for a while. Does that, does that matter? <laughs> Did you sleep with Willie Brown? Maybe you should have <laughs> slept with Willie Brown. Or served him eggs. No, so yeah. get the bell ready. <laughs> I, I always kind of felt that with Kilpatrick, who was two years younger than me. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm just this kind of mid-level reporter at a, at a big Metro Daily, but not the New York Times or the Washington Post. This guy's younger than me. He's already mayor. I'm like, oh, shit, where did I go wrong? And then he got a 28-year prison sentence. I thought, no, I think, I think I'm just going to keep moving at my pace. Hey, it's, it's, real, it's a real simple answer. Stop focusing on all the successful people and focus on all the losers around you That if you want to feel better. Well, right? I don't There's really point. focus on either one. It's just I was just... I'm kind of prepping for the the pod this morning and going through and looking at stuff and that and a tweet popped up about what she's been and she's 59 and it just struck me like oh 
that's a that's a decent amount of accomplishment. Yeah, but you didn't. Um, I don't know. Uh, you didn't by age twenty. You didn't shoot at a president like Thomas Crook. So you got that going well, for you. Well, it's also it also obviously means law school too. And the idea of, I mean, could you imagine? Could either of you imagine going to that much schooling or or becoming no. a doctor? Going to no. twelve years of schooling? Absolutely oh, not, dude. You know, I I, I um. I, I thought about law school when I was in, in high school. I thought I was going to be a lawyer and then switch to journalism at the last minute. And I always wanted to be a writer of fiction. I've never been able to have the discipline or the imagination to do it. And throughout my career, even after being somewhat established as a reporter, I thought, I think I'll go to law school. And then I'll get a, a wad of documents back from some sort of freedom of information request. And I'm about two pages in. I'm like, whoa, I'm falling asleep. Can you imagine? Yeah, no reading those law books and it's like reading the old testament by the time you get through 75 begats you've only gone two paragraphs it's just it, it takes it takes a certain uh a certain i guess stamina to to get through it, all that it, stuff. it does because and you have to see what's on the other end if you're if you're driven by uh money or driven by whatever i have a nephew and he's not necessarily driven by that but he went to yale law school he's living in a Really nice place in the the upper the lower east side of New York right now, working for some firm, right? I mean, but he was in school for twelve years, well, and internships, and you know, it's it's just it it takes it takes a very uh, a very powerful intellect to do something like become a doctor or a lawyer, and I respect that, and I realize I don't have those skills, but I'm constantly constantly staggered by how many really stupid doctors and lawyers I meet. I'm like, how did they get through that course when these guys can barely, you know, tie their own damn well, shoes? Wait, now, wait, when you say stupid, you mean stupid in their field or stupid in... No, I mean, like, when you're talking, like, who's this idiot? And, like, he's a doctor. I'm like, not my doctor. Yeah, but maybe they know their way around uh, their their specialty. Well, yeah, I mean, I it, mean, it that, could be one of the these hope, things right? where they they can tell what every insect is because they love to study that. And, yeah. you know, and, and then you ask them, well, what about them tigers? They're like, well, there's the tiger fly. No, no, I mean the Detroit tigers. Well, I don't know. What are they? A like cricket team? It's what? Well, even, even within the field, though, and, and I was a medical writer for about five years in a newspaper in Alabama, and so I was around a lot of doctors and just hospital administrators and nurses, the whole, the whole medical field. And even within doctors, there's a difference between, say, internists and surgeons. So, and I remember the guy that did the, the last time I blew my knee out, my orthopedic surgeon. He was he was good with his hands. He thought three dimensionally. He could see and think through the problem in my knee, but he wasn't all that bright. Yeah. Whereas, which was interesting, and and I found that fairly common with with uh, surgeons. Yeah, but I mean, then but then the internists, and it's funny. My brother, who's a veterinarian, always used to say the internists are the smart ones in medicine. Right? They're the yeah. ones that think things through, and have to have to have to deal with things you can't necessarily see. Well, Kramer right? used to say the veterinarians were the smart ones because they could they could heal all those species, whereas a doctor only does humans. Well, my brother does like to say, "Hey, we have to figure out what the problem is, and they can't tell us what it is." Yeah. We we got to diagnose without. It's like it's. Veterinarians get compared to pediatricians that way, right? It's funny. Mm. That's that, that's kind of the joke. But uh, by the way, Mike, we have a colleague who went to law school and then decided to become a journalist. Retired now, the great uh, David Zeman. Yeah, real idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, that guy went to more good colleges than uh, I know. I know. than anybody, and he ends up as a journalist. I'm like, I'm glad I didn't waste all my time getting those degrees. <laughs> yeah, he went to Michigan and North Carolina. North and Carolina, yeah, and I think he, I think he went to Miami for a while too. A I think he may have got. A That's the thing about a law degree, though. You can pretty much work almost anywhere because everybody needs a lawyer in every industry. Same with business; you can do a lot with just a business degree. Yeah, well, and you see you a lot of lawyers verbiage. get into business because they figure if I can figure this shit out, I can figure sure. that. Shit. Lawyers like to run everything, and this whole country was put together by lawyers, which is why it's so complicated. They, it's like an employment program for themselves where it's like, well, if you want to get anything yeah. done, you need to hire a lawyer. It's like, high fives. It's job security. Yeah, yeah I exactly. Get it. It totally makes sense. Hey, My brother's what's a lawyer. Wrong with, then what's wrong with us? What happened to us, huh? Well, somebody's got to pay these jamokes. Wearing, a, wearing an old Navy plaid shirt. I mean, I'm wearing an old Navy T-shirt, so that's... That's fine, but uh, here we are. Dickies. You know what I mean? I know my brother Which puts gets bad back to my, you in the Swedes. My brother's a prosecutor. He puts bad people away, and here I sit in a basement all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking it's around. Like, it's like you've been put away. <laughs> Pretty it's much. a self-imposed sentence. Where'd your brother go to law school? Um, 
Appalachia School of Law, but I think he graduated from Toledo. I think he switched to Toledo Law. Hillbilly prosecutor? And oh, he puts he the bad guys there, away. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. Or is it? Or is it? Is it like the vice president? And he did nothing but put weed smokers away. Yeah. Oh no! Well, I, it's funny because he's he's a lot like me, very deadpan. I'm like, well, you know, what do you prosecute besides? Because he's had murder trials, which is just blows my mind to see him litigate. Because um, he's a pretty quiet guy. Um, but I'm like, well, what what are most of your cases? He goes, meth, opioids, and then it's back to meth, and then it's back to opioids. Like it's just a, a cycle down there. We're like, meth will be high, then opioids will be high, then meth, then opioids. Damn, I make you nostalgic for the days of white lightning. White lightning? Uh, moonshine. Moonshine. Oh, moonshine, yeah. And one of the best Burt Reynolds films ever. Yeah. I had a jar of blackberry moonshine on my shelf for a long time. I would give it to it at a NASCAR race. 20 years ago and broke it out one night and people got a little crazy. What happened? What'd they the got, Swedes they got do? got naked and had some egg salad sandwich and jumped in a lake with a couple of <laughs> yeah. foreign dudes who worked on and, ships. Uh, my neighbors were over that, that night, the Dutch the Dutch neighbors and uh, the, 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 the guy. Where do you live at? The, the UN? Husband, <laughs> had, <laughs> had a little bit too much, a uh, little bit too much of the black rain. When do you shine, hang out with I, Americans? I remember, trying, <laughs> I remember him stumbling into the, uh, into the Arbor Vitae's when he grown together, kind of finding, he couldn't find an opening to one in the morning, two in the morning. Reminded me of the meme of Homer Simpson sort of <laughs> backing into the bush. <laughs> and then he sort of fell through. I don't know if he fell asleep on the grass. I don't know if he ever made it inside or whatever. Who knows? That's the power of moonshine. I know. I have a, I have a big old mason jar of it at home from, from Kentucky because I had relatives that had a place down there. So they brought some back. And I've never been able to, to crack it and drink it because why would I? I yeah, other, I a, just keep it as a keep it as a souvenir. Every once in a while, and, and open to and smell tools. it. tools. Yeah, it's it is so strong. It's ugh. and there's not much flavor. I mean, you really got to mix it with something. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but hey, man, if you're in a dry county, why what not? Are you do yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So so we will keep an eye on the political situation. If you want to see the column that I wrote on the fly, I will have a link to that on our website. We'll uh, also have a link. To our merchandise store, we hope you will get in there because this stuff is cool. And it is a good way to support the show without straight up giving us cash, which, by the way, we will certainly accept that and don't in any, in any manner discourage you from just, uh, just plain old laying some dough on us. But, um, but Sean is uh, going to be where, – where, where you, are you doing Lions? When does the training camp start? Wednesday. Start, I think the rookies have already reported, but it starts uh, Wednesday. I am off until then, and then, boy – be on Allen Park a lot. 8 a.m., Dan Campbell kicks it off with a press conference. And then and what practice, do you, what practice practice What should we be begins. looking for from the Lions? Any big changes? Is there something that's going to happen at camp? Are there any jobs that are going to be battled for? Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a, there was a receiver spot. Uh, I think the offensive line as well said. There are a few. A few I saw yesterday a story. There are a few of the new signees. Marcus Davenport is a defensive end. Mm-hmm. DJ Reader, who's a defensive tackle. They're both on the uh, – the pup list, the uh, the injured list, but so we might not get to see them for a bit. You know, they've got new pieces in the secondary. That's the hope, right, that the defense is going to be a little bit better, just enough, and then the offense will be just as good, and maybe they'll finally get to that Super Bowl. But this is, Mike, as you know, the most, and Mark will tell you too, is somebody that actually loves the Lions, the most highly anticipated camp in, oh, yeah. in, in, in what, 30 years, Mark? I mean, oh, it's, oh, without a doubt, yeah. Thirty years, God, I would think. In, well, they since were, uh, since they traded, uh, what's his name, uh, Bobby Lane? Yeah, Chase. yeah, may, may, no, pro- probably since when Barry left. Oh, right, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. D- did all the coaches stay? Are there any new coaches? They they kept. There are a couple a couple of new position coaches, but the main coaches uh, obviously Campbell's there. But the, the brain the, the trust is still there. Yeah, Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator, who's a hot name and probably could have left. He stayed, and that's really good for continuity. And Aaron Glenn's back, and he's got more toys to play with. So there's the defensive coordinator. So we'll see. It's uh, Who'd we lose? It, Did we lose any, anybody big that I can't think of off the top of my head? You mean in terms of players or yeah, coaches? Yeah, players that left. Uh, Jonah Jackson was probably oh, that's the, right. the, yep, the, guard. the biggest name. Mm-hmm. The, the guard who went and got a nice big fat contract. But they replaced him with, uh, God, I can't think of his name. He's uh, from Baltimore. He's an all-pro interior lineman. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there should be. Yeah. Uh, God, what is his name? Anyway, sorry. I'll have it for you next time. Yeah. Watch for Sean's work in the free press. By the way, a subscription is $1 for six months. Somebody was bitching at me last week about uh, my column. I think on, I had another column about Tony Saunders, who was the former chief financial officer at Wayne County 
who was in trouble for uh, for domestic violence. He was accused of beating his wife in January. Well, guess what happened in June? He got arrested in Troy for, wait for it, we should have a bell for this one too, beating his wife. And he was back in court, and we'll have a link to that column as well. But but this guy was, uh, was kind of chewing me up for like, you know, well... You know, you had this and you had that, and and uh, and the Detroit News had a story the same day uh, on a related matter that he was involved in and tangentially. He's like, "Is this a conspiracy between the new two newspapers?" I'm like, "No, I happen to do a story. They happen to do a story. Coincidentally, they popped up on the same day, and he was getting deep and all this other shit with him. Like, hey, dude, you're paying 15 cents a month for some of the finest investigative reporting in the in the country. What's your beef?" <laughs> So please subscribe. It's a dollar for six months. I mean, come on. Well, if you're short on money, I know a way to oh, well, make, it, make money. Yeah, exactly. If you want dollars to seem like pennies and pennies to seem like <laughs> pesos, or I don't know where I'm going with this, you want to go see Luke Nowacki because even if you're not a big-time city official who can travel on the people's dime. For a second, I thought you were going to drop that segue that I threw to you. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? You did it. You fumbled it around and you pulled it in. Well done. I'm like, I'm in Ra. I get 200 well, segues uh, a day yeah, from the get, jugs gun. Lucky you didn't get hit when that segue was coming at you. Well, you know, it's sometimes you catch it with your face. Or maybe you're a political contributor there who gets go. hooked up with government contracts. Well, good for you, but bad for the rest of us. Now, if you're not among the swells lining your pockets with taxpayers' money, if you're someone who actually works for a living for 15 cents a month, I just figured out. I don't know why the hell I'm doing that. law thing sounds better all the time. <laughs> Call financial specialist Luke Nowacki at 248-663-4748. He'll discuss strategies to grow your assets from annuities to individual retirement accounts to college savings. Make that call now. You've got kids and kleptocrats to feed. Luke Nowacki's at 248-663-4748. And you know what's going to happen when you call Luke? What? He'll make it all about you, sweetheart. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Bonaic Well. Sync member FINRA SIPC Bonaic Well. Sync is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent Bonaic Well. Sync. Planning ahead for the future seems like a really simple message. Well, here's another very simple message. And you don't even need to listen if you're happy with your contact lenses, your progressive eyeglasses, or the reading glasses hanging from your neck on a string. You know, I, I, I used to keep my glasses on like a, a retainer so yeah, that, it, yeah. you know, so I wouldn't lose That's them. That's annoying. And, uh, and I was at a conference and I was talking to some, some fine, young, aspiring journalist and... Uh, and I was talking to one of my colleagues. He said, I think she kind of was flirting with me. And he said, right. no, they were saying what a dork you look like with your glasses <laughs> around you. And he said, well, oh, I really read that wrong. Um, but if you've grown tired or annoyed by any of those visual crutches, that's a true story. Uh, then can, yeah, no, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, then this. considering Dr. Yaldo, consider contacting Dr. Yaldo, the man who will take that shit from around your neck, get it off your nose, out of your eyeball, and will set you free with unencumbered 2020 vision or better, like 2015, like Mark and I have, for everything up close and farther away. For those of you 40 and beyond, bifocal lens implants do just that. They replace your aging lenses to give you stunning vision for life, from the small type on your phone, to the computer screen, to the menu, to reading the coach's lips from the last row in the... Oh, Connor. Uh, Dr. Yaldo has done more LASIK and lens replacement procedures than anyone in Michigan. This gift of precision vision lasts a lifetime, and it takes minutes and is relatively painless. So get the free evaluation. See what your options are. Call 1-800-398-EYES or visit Yaldo Eye Center. Dot com, and we'll have a link to Dr. Yaldo's website on our website. When you see Luke and when you see Dr. Yaldo, please tell him that ML sent you. Oh, man, the geeks have inherited the earth. Did I do that? What a dork. Does him wanting to play with us again mean that he's turning into a geek or we're turning into cool guys? There was a reference a little earlier in the show about the French, and I thought, wow, this would be a perfect opportunity to get to our Geek of the Week. But, you know, good things come to those who wait. And our Geek this week is a member of parliament for the radical left France Unbowed Party who sparked outrage after saying Israeli athletes are not welcome at the Paris Olympics and calling for protests 
against their presence. Now, this kind of forgets the history of what's happened to Israeli athletes yeah, in Olympics. In I mean, Munich. I mean, come on, dude. How young are you? You don't remember that? Anyways, this, uh, this uh, MP named Thomas Portis, citing Israel's war in Gaza, told a pro-Palestinian gathering in Paris on Saturday... We are just a few, and he didn't say it this way, he said it in French. We're just a few days away from an international event to be held in Paris, the Olympic Games, and I'm here to say that no, the Israeli delegation is not welcome in Paris. Israeli athletes are not welcome at the Olympic Games in Paris. We have to use this deadline and all the levers we have to mobilize. Now, that sounds like very irresponsible and inflammatory language, but looking at it from a broader perspective, can we just let these athletes do what they do? Mm. Now, if they're one of these athletes who's riding horseback with Putin or if they're helping, uh, you know, formulate dirty bombs with Kim Jong-un or something like that, okay, that's another thing. But most of these athletes are apolitical. They've worked their ass off their whole life to get this chance. And even to get this chance, they had to get a little lucky to win a spot that somebody just as good could have got but didn't have a good day on the day they needed to have their best day. Do they have to be dragged into this thing as political footballs? I say no. Can I, uh, can I add another geek of the week to the, to the list, too? You sure, were, although I must me. say, uh, it, I must it say that into it. Uh, Minister of, of Parliament uh, Thomas Portis, you are our geek de la semaine. Oh, what does that mean? Of the week. Oh. Um, no, I was going to add, because you, you mentioned Munich and it reminded me, did you see Adidas had to apologize for their, their print ad? No. <laughs> what of you guys? Um, they had a print ad with Bella Hadid on it. Oh, yes, I've heard she got, but I got to tell you something. I don't know who she is or why she's in trouble. I'm just not that up on pop so she, culture. She's a model, a very attractive model, but she's been very vocal and being a critic of Israel in the oh. war. She's Palestinian-American. But the whole point of the commercial or the ad, the print ad, is that they're bringing back the shoes that the athletes wore in the 1972 <laughs> Munich Olympics. And here you have a company that at one point was run by a Nazi, Adidas, was Puma, um, ah. have an anti-Israel, pro-Palestinian model as the face of the shoes for the 72 Munich. It's like, what are you doing? How do you now walk through this better? Yeah, that sounds like somebody should have said, uh, let, let's let's pause this for just a minute. And, and I should say, my geek of the week is not because I'm taking a Yours side in any of this stuff. Uh, I thought, again, Bernie Sanders was great when he was on. He's like, what Hamas did in Israel was unacceptable. But Benjamin Netanyahu is a war criminal. I mean, if yeah, Biden two, had two ever said that at true. some point, yeah. I think he would have been doing a lot better than he was. But he isn't, and so he's gone. So those are the geeks of the week. Those are our geeks. So last week, Alex set off a ferocious debate here in room 7609. In fact, if, if this really was a new wave suite in some swank uh, Euro hotel, we would have smashed the furniture up and punched holes in the drywall over the issue of groove in New Wave, <laughs> or lack thereof. And we, we reached out to Alex, who we haven't heard from before, but it was great to meet him, at least uh, electronically. And he has picked up our challenge to explain. He says, hey guys, I had to take some time to think about how to settle the debate from the last episode. For starters, I did not expect to create the schism on the show because of my song nomination, and he picked Electric Feel. Um, from, uh, what was the band? MGMT, right? MGMT, that's right. Secondly, I don't think I've heard Sean that giddy before. I'm glad to hear my song made him so happy. I agree with both sides of the argument when it comes to music and how you listen. Growing up, I was in various band classes throughout middle and high school. I listened to plenty of music across the spectrum. I can name a tune from any genre that I thoroughly enjoy. Oh, yeah. Ooh, spread out. And unfortunately, ML, it is because of the groove, the way it makes you feel or just a specific repeating chord structure. Yeah. I don't dispute that. I can tap my toe to just about anything if it catches my ear. 
as new wave music often does. N- <laughs> he didn't write that, but he should have. Now, with that said, there are also favorites that when you break down the lyrics, it's more engaging, and for that, I enjoy it. And I've been called someone who only cares about lyrics and not beats, and that's just, just not true. More, more, not only, but more. Okay. For example, most La Dispute songs are more about the deeper getting a little ponders now. Ah. But, uh, more about the deeper meaning behind the lyrics as the reasoning why I like their stuff. Whereas other bands like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Talking Heads, or even some rap artists, it's the melodic formation of their songs or albums that are the reason and I don't care about the words. Amen. For me and maybe most people is all about the groove of the song. And a song like Electric Feel back in 2008, it was about the feel of it. Plus, when you're young and a song like that gets the women dancing, you want to be where the girls are. It's a no-brainer. Hope that helps, Alex. Well, I think it does. So this week, I've picked a new wave tune that not only has groove, but it expresses my feelings about Mr. Sean Windsor. Hmm. It's Wham! Young Guns, go for it. And of course, the first lords are... Hey, sucker. (laughs) Talking to you, Sean Windsor. Hey, sucker. What the hell's got into you? Hey, sucker. There's nothing you can do. Why? Seen your face around town a while, so I greeted you with a knowing smile. When I saw that girl up on your arm, I knew she won your heart with a fake tall charm. I said, Soul boy, let's hit the town. I said, Hey, boy, what's with the frown? But in return, all you could say was, Hi, Dodge, meet my fiance. Young guns having some fun, crazy ladies keep them on the run. Wise guys realize there's danger in emotional ties. See, they single and free, no fears, no fears. What I want to be One, two, take a look at you Death by matrimony Hey, sucker If you're happy with a nappy, then you're in for fun But you're here, and you're there But there's guys like you just everywhere And looking back on the good old days Well, this young gun says Or she pays Young guns have a time fun Crazy ladies keep them on the run Wise guys realize there's danger in emotional ties See, they single and free, no fears, no fears But I want to be one, two, take a look at you Such fun and everything was fine I remember when we used to have a good time Partners in crime Tell me that's all in the past And I will gladly walk away Tell me that you're happy now Turning my back, nothing to say Tell this dirt to take a hike There's something about that boy I don't like Well, sugar, he don't mean the things he says Just get him out of my way, cause I'm seeing red We got plans to make, we got things to buy You're wasting time on some creepy guy up, chick, that's a friend of mine. Just wash your mouth, baby, out of line. Hey, sucker! You catch that groove? <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. I liked the bass, though. The bass was really strong. 
it's got a lot of groove to it. Sean? No, I, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's, that's not really for me, but I appreciate the effort and uh, <laughs> the groove. And, and I, I just want to thank you guys for having me. I've got to step away here. All right, brother. A, a different uh, kind of meeting on a different uh, Zoom. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. Hey, Sean, uh, on yes, behalf sir. of George Michael and Andrew Ridge, I just want to say, hey, young gun, go for it. Sucker. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Hey, sucker! Yeah, if you don't, if you don't mind. Uh, I look forward to being back uh, back in the studio next week. All right, brother. All right, Buzz. All right, take we'll care. We'll All right. see you yep. then. Yep, yep, yep. So what do you know about that song? So that song uh, kind of launched Wham!, they had signed a contract. They Ridgely and George Michael were friends from school. They they had some uh, record producer who'd started a new label and just said, you know what, I'm going to take a chance on you guys. Mm-hmm. They put together a few songs, didn't really make much of a splash, but then an act canceled on top of the pops, and Wham! was the replacement artist, and they came on and they did Young Guns Go For It, and all of a sudden, they took off, and they had a pretty uh, meteoric rise. It did not last very long because George Michael wanted to get away from sort of the appealing to young teenage girls and into more serious material. Um, you know, like, uh, please uh, alert me before you leave was one of the themes, which turned into, of course, that thoughtful treatise yeah. on wake me up before you go-go. Yep. But, um, but yeah, he wanted to go in more of a, I guess, a more thoughtful direction. And Ridgely's like, shit, man, this is all I know. And racing cars. So, um, so that was the song that got them on the path to stardom. Was that, so was that before uh, the infamous Wham! rap? Do you remember that one or no? There's some pretty infamous rapping in there. And by yeah. infamous, I no, mean I think it was famous called, for being bad. I think it was called Wham! Rap. It's so, it's so Oh, I don't awful. know. I it's don't know. So bad, yeah. Yeah, I, I just, I, I just don't. And Wham's an... Uh, George Michael's an interesting dude, period. I mean, what a, what a crazy life. And a pretty that, interesting that, documentary, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, Ridgely, I believe, produced it, so it's very friendly towards, well, both of them, really, but really towards himself, too. But you get a better appreciation for George Michael's ability, mainly as a production guy, too. Okay. I don't know. I really like the documentary. I'm not a big Wham! fan or George Michael fan, but I, it makes me appreciate them a lot more. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big uh, fan, but I do appreciate their uh, that song their talent yeah. and uh, and George Michael really he he had he had some really good pipes and uh, and I I do have to admit I really like Careless Whisper. But I don't. That's not Wham though. I know it's George Michael, but I mean. <laughs> hey, I like Freedom '90s. So what? Oh, geez. Do you know that one? Freedom, ooh, ee, 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 freedom, ooh, yeah. ee, ooh, ooh. But remember, I was also 14 when that video came Give out. Give what you live. The, the video that had every super, I mean, that's when there were supermodels. Like yeah. Super, supermodels. You know, Christy Turlington was in there, Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell. Yeah. Pretty hot video. So Mia's 14. Yeah. Probably should have found a urinal. In London. <laughs> Peddled your wares. It's from a conversation off the air. It's a bangers and mash. Um, yeah, no, uh, that's uh, that's room seven six oh nine. So uh, so we hopefully hopefully that settles the debate. Now here's the obvious rejoinder: Are you saying that Wham is a new wave group? Yeah, mm, kind of more more poppy, but definitely. Well, new wave. Come on, though. New wave is eighties pop. Yes. Yes, it is. I mean, I mean uh, you could maybe have the argument that they were more a dance group. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but new wave. You that know, I, yeah. I could have done a first round knockout on this debate and just had you play Blue Monday by <laughs> by New Order, but I wanted to try and not take the easy road. So yeah. uh, sounds so like you. If you, yes, exactly, the road less traveled because everybody's like that road sucks and that dick is on it. <laughs> so um, if you guys have to, some suggestions for us for room seven six zero nine, please send them to us. Of course, we always. Love the story, often more than the music. And uh, next week, I think we're going to be playing a little something suggested by DJ Weiser. All right. Who has some feedback for us. He says, hello, crew. Enjoying all the great shows of late. It would be cool to see Erica Erickson be a co-host like one show a month. Believe me, we'll get as much Erica Erickson on the show as possible because she is fantastic at this. I mean, people think you just come in and talk. Uh, A lot of those people are named Sean. 
but there is there is something to it's almost like an improv where you got to know when to get in you need to know when when something's running its course you need to know when to change direction you need to know when to freshen things up well she also does prep and she's great at that i mean she yeah. has sent prep over which yeah I don't know. no she's i don't know if those two have but. like all people who make it look easy they make it look easy because they're so good at it and because they work really hard to make it look easy. So, yes, you will hear Erica Erickson again on these airwaves. Uh, DJ Weiser says, I know she is super busy, which she is, but she brings the female side. Just a thought. Or maybe Drew, give her, her own show on the network. Something to talk to the boss about. DJ Weiser also says, I hope you have Charlie on leading into this year's election. Do you think Biden should step aside? That one's taking care yes. of itself. I would love to hear your thoughts, and I think we've covered a lot of that, but it's always good to hear from you. Cheers, Bill DJ Weiser. So there's some feedback. Uh, one other piece of feedback here from David. Dear ML Army of One, I have never heard a porno use a new wave beat. That should be the final say <laughs> in the new wave base quote, debate, end quote. Dave. P.S. Case closed. Sincere congratulations on the Society of Professional Journalists Award. So, so Dave, you you sold me out with the Army of One, but you redeem yourself by kissing my ass on my. It's a pretty cool way to mention that you got an award. Laurel. It's Dave. You know. It's yeah. Just, no, you had to read. How that. am I gonna? You know, I just read. I get what, it. I'm I'm like Ron Burgundy. I just read whatever's in the prompter. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so we're a little out of order. We usually thank our donors before we get to feedback, and sometimes that doesn't take very long because we don't have any donors. Guess what? What? For the first time in about a month, all right. we have a new member oh. of the Soul Patrol. Awesome. Dave Stencil is the latest Patreon member of our small but hopefully growing tribe of Thank people you, who appreciate the show and realize that it's in danger unless we have more support from our audience. I mean, I can tell you... A Michigan, democracy will fail if uh, we don't get more Patreon supporters. Oh, wow. I'm so just going to go with that. That just is, seems to be the theme of the year. Democracy will fail if something doesn't happen. Or... Is, 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 uh, is lack of financial support from our audience an existential threat yes, to the future of <laughs> this, all, of all democracy. this banana republic? That's probably true. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we finally hit on something. Again, the, a great way to support this show and, and have something to show for it is to... Um, is to buy our merchandise. You know, you can, we'll have a link to it on our website. This is really high quality stuff. And if you think you know what we offer, we've changed up our classic t shirt a little bit, giving it a groovier look. We've got uh, new trucker hats, which I think are some of the sharpest we've ever offered. We got some cool stickers if you want to keep it on the low end, beer koozies, uh, keep those cans cold. Um, zip up hoodie, hockey style hoodies, uh, some traditional hoodies and a groovy new polo shirt so please uh, we'd really appreciate it you'll be seeing me pimping this on x all week if you see those like those posts like them and share them and click through and see what we got there is free shipping after a minimum purchase and the way this pop-up shop works is it's open until july 29th that's monday july 29th at 8 p.m you put your order in we only make what you order, and then within two, maybe three weeks, they tend to be faster than that, we will ship the goods to you. So this is our first sale of the year. Maybe we'll do it again around the holidays. Maybe we won't. Don't count on it. Get in now because this is some pretty cool gear. And we will have a link to the pop-up shop on our sh on our website, which is mlsoulofdetroit.com. So, now, I know you're not a natural beauty, but I think with the right clothes and the right look, you can be very striking. And, and that's true. Danny McBride doesn't just say that shit. He, he knows what he's talking about. I mean, he's a preacher and an ex-ball player and uh, I think also a school kung administrator. Fu artist. Yeah. And a kung fu artist. Oh, and a kung fu artist. Everyone always forgets about the, the, the hand fist. Way. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, don't, don't let Danny down. Um, Mark, I, I, I was going to say what's up next, but after the past week we've had, I think anybody who predicts anything is just going to end up looking like a whole, fool. The whole month. It's been the weirdest month in politics. Yeah. And life in general. Tigers are showing a little life. That's well, really flirting with 500. And we have the Olympics coming up. The Olympics are coming up. Yeah. And uh, LeBron James is going to be the flag bearer at the Olympics. Is he what really? You, yeah. What do you think about that? Why? Why him? Because he's the most popular athlete in the world? I don't know. I mean, How do they, what, I mean, what, okay, is there supposed to be some 
I'm very fascinated by this, and it means nothing. It has no effect on the world whatsoever, but is there supposed to be some purpose to the flag bearer? Are they supposed to exemplify something? Yeah, I think they're supposed to be what we aspire to be, but I... But he's again, probably the richest person competing in the Olympics. Well, so... So you just nailed it for me. I love it when the flag bearer is somebody we don't know about who yeah. has an amazing, compelling story. And this may be their only time getting some recognition. You know, maybe it's somebody from the uh, the flag football team or the uh, you know the what's the the skeleton or some yeah, crazy yeah, shit like that sport, or the badminton yeah. team. What don't we know about LeBron James? What I, what honor I, hasn't he had? I mean, I'm not to knock him. I mean, he's he certainly worthy, but it's like, dude, giving this to him is just like, uh, okay, one more thing to do. Somebody else. Does Nike outfit the U.S. Olympic team or something? Uh, <laughs> Nike and like, Ralph Lauren. Oh, well, there you go. I feel like Nike just went, uh, yeah, we want our number one commodity out there carrying, yeah, carrying least, the flag. At least he's, he's not carrying. Uh, I mean, wouldn't Simone Biles shirt. even be better? Um, she has a pretty compelling story, but also very well known and, and, and highly decorated. Um, I but know, but I'm just trying to think of somebody that you would have a problem with that is, you know, I mean, she's dominated her sport more than he has even really. Oh, I got no problem with, with making it LeBron James. I'm just, I, I just feel like it's I'm being weird. robbed of an inspirational story. Um, because LeBron is enjoyed so much success that he's even transferred some of it onto his kid who, I almost feel sorry for because I think people are wailing on him just because he is LeBron's kid. But on the other hand, if he wasn't LeBron's kid, maybe he wouldn't be in a position to get wailed on. So I, I can't, I'll never reconcile that debate in my mind. But uh, this, this is really funny. So I just quickly looked up the last couple of flag bearers for the Summer Olympics. Uh -huh. And um, I mean, we're wrong. And there apparently has been a trend for more famous people. Sue Bird apparently was the last one in 2020. Oh, okay. But my you could argue pretty obscure women's basketball before Caitlin Clark and uh, and Angel Reese. I don't know that Yeah, that but listen be... to the rest of these because you'll, okay. you'll realize that she's well more, and even back then was better known than a lot of these. So 2016 Michael Phelps, I think he kind of earned that. Flipper though, feet, yeah. Even though he might have been one of the richest athletes at that Olympics. And lots of, lots of hardware on the shelf already. 20, lots of endorsements. 2012 in London. Marielle Zaninga, some fencer. Oh, but there you go. Let's let's go with Mario. 2008, Lopez Loming, track and field. 2004, Don Staley, basketball. Double L, I love it. Uh, 2000, Cliff Meidel, a flatwater canoer. Oh, yeah. Cliff, it, it, is also, that, is uh, that even uh, a sport anymore? Also uh, retired to Cheers, didn't he? <laughs> That's right. Bruce Baumgartner, wrestling. Okay, uh, double B. Francie Lurie Smith, track and field. Evelyn Ashford, track and field. Ed Burke, track Ashford, and field. Ashford, I think, was pretty big. Really? I think so, wasn't she? Or was it Ashford and Simpson, I'm thinking of? Lots of good groove for Sean. <laughs> so I, you know, whatever. What does it matter? It's, it's really interesting, though. LeBron just brings out if they had, an emotional response from people. Maybe they just want the flag to be held higher than other teams' um, flags. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Have they had uh, retired people too? I mean, I remember. I, maybe well, that's just for the athlete, torch, right? Yeah. I mean, I remember Muhammad Ali. I think oh, when he almost lit the on torch all of Atlanta on fire. Atlanta, yeah. yeah so I, I think maybe it's the running the leg of the torch that's the honorific. You know, where yeah. it's. Uh, but you have to be on the U.S. team to carry the to flag. carry the flag. Okay. But I just I think you could find somebody better than I, LeBron. How about that wrestler from up north? I mean, there's a guy from the UP who's on the U.S. wrestling team. You, you can't tell me that he doesn't have an inspiring story. I mean, and, and someone who deserves, he deserves recognition so much that I know about him, but I can't remember his name. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's my man for the flag. Do you like the Olympics? Do you get into the Olympics? Um, some sports I do. In winter, I really love Winter Olympics. Okay. That's the one I, I really like. I, I find the... Uh, and there's a Spartan who's in the decathlon, so I'm going to probably oh, really? have to watch yeah. that. But, uh, you know, when they had the dude with the gold shoes who was a sprinter? Yeah, Michael Johnson. Yeah, mm -hmm. big dude. Uh, mm -hmm. I liked watching him. Usain Bolt, I mean, holy smokes, that dude is insane. But the Summer Olympics just doesn't really, really do okay. it for me. Although... I think I was knocking doors um, when I was running for city council and somebody had the Olympics on. Well, that doesn't sound right because it would have been 2021. And I couldn't help myself looking. Well, that, that's right because of COVID. Oh, right. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't help myself when I was indoors looking in the window to see what was going on because 
you see the red, white, and blue, and you kind of get drawn in. It, this is an opportunity for us to be really proud of our Even country for I doing swear, something overseas that doesn't have all blown people up. I believe 90% of the athletes train here in the U.S. It really feels that way. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean a lot of them play college athlete, athletics here in, yeah. the, in the U.S., Ninety percent's a little high. It's probably honest. Probably like fifty percent train here, or play college athletics. I I don't think it's been good for the Olympics, but I did prefer when everybody was really an amateur. But now I'm going to get us into the whole. Oh, for fuck's sake, so. give me a break. No one's allowed to make money if it fits your moral standing. No, I mean you can make money with sponsorships. Or lots of people did really well with that kind of stuff, and I'm glad. But but I think most of these obscure Let's, sports, even. Even when you have professionals allowed to compete, they're still scrambling to try and pay the bills. But I just, I just liked that this was for people who had that commitment to their sport, and the people who are making money in it, well, they can, they can benefit from it that way. But, but if you want to be the best of the best, and then when national pride gets involved, how are you ever going to hold your back when the stinking Reds have professional hockey players playing as amateurs because oh, they're, they're quote-unquote in the Red Army and not really, you know, soldiers? So, yeah, I mean, whatever. It is what it is. Go USA. It's funny. I'm just looking um, just for the University of Michigan perspective. Uh, athletes that are in the tournament. Uh-huh. Two basketball players are playing for Germany. The Wagner brothers, Franz and oh, Mo, nice. Mo, are both playing for Germany. Um, a women's basketball player. She's an incoming freshman. It's kind of a. This is kind of an interesting story. Incoming freshman of the women's team, so she hasn't even gone to school there yet. Is on the Canadian basketball team. She's only like eighteen. And don't you have that guy who was driving really fast on the pistol shooting team? Yeah, good one. Is he hilarious? No, that's not him. But here's another one: Canadian, U.S., Malaysia, Syria, Bulgaria, USA, 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 USA. Another Syrian. Canada, South Africa, USA, Canada, Canada, Serbia, UAE, Australia, Israel, Israel, Norway, Brazil, USA, Canada. I mean, that's crazy. Brazil, this, Romania, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Canada, this is Singapore. Which sport? These are all sports. Oh, okay. Just all the athletes and just the countries they're representing. And they actually played and participated at the University of Michigan in the NCAA. Oh, those are all Michigan athletes. Those are all Michigan oh, athletes wow. representing different countries. San Marino, Serbia, another one, Mexico, USA. Another San Marino. I, it's just, it's bizarre. So well, when you watch the Olympics, it's really like watching the NCAA um, championships. So I, I wouldn't know how to tell them to win, but if they asked me for some advice, I would just say, young guns, go for it. Oh, good one. On that note. And just what is a sucker? Well, it's someone who pays full price. So make sure to take advantage of summer and book your tour on Detroit's favorite party bike, the Michigan Peddler. 15 people can enjoy two hours touring and pedaling through Corktown, Midtown, and Downtown, stopping for pictures and perhaps a beverage or two. The Michigan Peddler offers the longest tours in Detroit, seat backs, and the friendliest staff to make your experience one to remember. Book your tour at michiganpeddler.com. That's Michigan, P-E-D-A-L-E-R.com. And as an exclusive to ML Soul of Detroit listeners, you'll get the only promo code they're offering. Enter ML Soul in the promo code. That's M-L-S-O-U-L. And receive $40 off the price of one of their 15 passenger party bike tours. You can also save with Come Play Detroit. I deal with a lot of people in Detroit who like to play games, but if you really want to play, there's no better way to do it than with Come Play Detroit. It's my choice for softball and volleyball, but they offer a wide variety, a wide variety of sports, and they play all year round, offering everything from one-day tournaments to seasons that last 8 to 10 weeks. You can sign up as an individual, as part of a small group, or as a full team, but go to Come Play Detroit and use promo code SOUL, S-O-U-L, and you will get 10% off your first registration. It's a great way to get in the game and support the show. That's ComePlayDetroit.com. Now, Cyrus. Take us out! Can you dig that? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Joe. Joe. Joe Biden. The story of a man. A mountain. And a miracle. Take me! 